We're here with Doug Hurley, uh, Senior Director of Business Development at Northrop Grumman, also a former NASA astronaut. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're on the cusp of a, another big launch, which you have a lot of experience with. You were the pilot of the last shuttle flight. You were a spacecraft commander for the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. Um, you're not on this mission, you're not on the spacecraft, but it's another big day for the space program. Can you talk about your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think you put it perfectly. It's just an, it's, it's an exciting evolution of human spaceflight. You know, it's long overdue, in my opinion, for us to be going to the moon again. Um, and then, you know, as we've heard, you know, using it as a stepping stone ultimately to Mars, which is just an incredible goal. So, um, yeah, it just it's just so neat to be back at Kennedy and to be ready, you know, for a launch in just a few days. I mean, an incredible amount of work has gone into this vehicle. Um, you know, people have worked significant portions of their career already to get it to this point, which is just amazing. But we're here and we're ready to go. So can't wait for Monday. You know, this is a test flight. Uh, we've been warned of the risks and what can go wrong. Um, do you think it's smart not to have a crew on this particular mission? Or do you wish in the back of your mind that you were able to strap in or one of your colleagues was able to strap in to, to this test flight? Yeah, a great question. You know, my personal perspective as a test pilot, this is this is exactly what we should be doing. Build up approach to human spaceflight. Um, end to end test of a vehicle. We're going to test it probably much more than we would with a crew on it. It's uh, if we launch on Monday, it's a 42 day mission. The crewed flight for Artemis two is going to be significantly shorter. So just to get an understanding of how the hardware works from start to finish and then be able to crawl all over everything when we get back or look at the data because obviously there's significant portions of the hardware that aren't designed to come back but we're going to be able to get Orion back in the in the Pacific sometime in October and get a good look at at the capsule at the heat shield which is you know that's probably the biggest test objective for this flight at least from what folks are saying is testing that heat shield at those lunar re-entry velocities and making sure that it's safe, no issues for crew when we put them on them for the next flight. You know, a decade ago, I think NASA, the NASA Administrator Charlie Bolin kind of identified three big objectives for the agency over the 20 teens or that decade. Yeah. One was commercial crew, one was James Webb Space Telescope, the other was Space Launch System. And two of those have launched and we're on the verge of the third one. I'm just wanted to, you know, if you look back at the end of the shuttle program, you were a part of that, you were a part of that decade of development leading up to this point. Just your perspective on how far the agency has come since July 2011. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how much doubt I think a lot of us had, not only in the crew office, but just in general in the agency. You know, at the end of 2011, what are we going to do? You know, where are we going now notwithstanding and i think it was even worse from a public standpoint you know um it's like okay you guys are done flying in space it's like well no we're still flying to the space station we're still you know flying crews albeit on soyuz rockets but we're still doing that but it really was a crossroads and i give charlie of course he's a uh, i flew with his son in the marines and i know charlie really well and think the world of him and it was a tough tough time and nobody better than him to be at the helm of NASA and to point us in this direction and then just see the wisdom that he had and the understanding that he had that we would get to this point literally 12 years later. Um, you know, we had a successful commercial crew flight. Uh, the first one was in 2020. We've done a number of those now. James Webb, by every possible measurable, you know, I mean, it just really has done amazing. I mean, just the pictures, they did, I mean, that picture of Jupiter that they uh, showed the other day, I just, you know, and, and then just, you know, from a personal standpoint, being part of Northrop Grumman and, and that success, having flown on DM2, and then now being part of uh, SLS with the boosters, it's just, uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, we owe it to Charlie, not to mention the nation, to, to make this a success. You mentioned those boosters here. I was wondering if you could talk about what kind of performance they're going to provide yeah. and uh, some of the features features of these boosters here. Yeah, so um, a couple bits of uh, trivia. Uh, I'm uh, 
my good friend Mark Tobias is a is the real expert on these boosters. But you know, so the I'll just talk a little bit about the differences. So these are shuttle heritage boosters from the standpoint of the cases and a lot of the equipment. So these boosters, there are segments here that I flew on on STS 127. I don't think there are any STS 135, but there's also an STS 124 booster part that my wife flew on. So we've got very good family history here. <laughs> Um, it's five segments, vice four. So the four segment boosters were on shuttle. Uh, SLS requires uh, bigger boosters, more oomph. So 25% more thrust, 1.6 million pounds of thrust per booster. So we've got an 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at launch for the entire stack. And 7.2 of that is the boosters. So an incredible amount of power, but we understand the hardware. Obviously, it's a little bit bigger, but we understand this. It's got an incredible amount of shuttle heritage, as I said. So we're excited to be, you know, that first big lift into space for, uh, for SLS and Orion, and we're looking forward to Monday. You know, I've seen a lot of shuttle launches. You know, it had a kind of distinctive crackle from those SRVs. I was just going to say that. The crackle is what I'm looking forward to hearing. I, I would guess you're going to still hear that because it really kind of – overwhelm the, so the sound of the main engines i thought whenever i watched one in person and so i'm expecting to hear that same very distinct crackle of that solid rocket propellant being burnt so looking forward to it and hopefully if the weather cooperates we're going to be able to even see the separation on on monday so um two minutes and six seconds uh, and then a little bit more s uh, sls uh, booster trivia i think it's 177 feet so they're you know, 25, 30 feet taller than what we had on shuttle. So it's amazing. Having saw the vehicle in the VAB, you know, you, you could get, you get a sense of it here, but this is a huge distance between the top of the boosters. And whereas shuttle, the boosters were just kind of below the windows of, uh, of the, of the crew module. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's amazing how huge this vehicle is. Well, Doug, thank you for your time and uh, you guys. good luck with the mission and good yeah. luck with your new role at Northrop Grumman. Thanks, Stephen. Really appreciate it.